Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a little story time on all of the bleeding that I had in the beginning. And if you didn't watch my last story time video, that's where I had started the story on my bleeding. I am, I am pregnant with number three and did experience some first um, trimester bleeding. And here's what happened. So when I was on vacation, um, this is a little recap if you did not watch that last video. Um, we went to Myrtle Beach. We were at a hotel that had a water park. We were at the water park, came back from the water park, and I started bleeding. And I don't remember ever, ever bleeding this much with my last two. So I ran to the emergency room, left my sister with all of the children, um, my one, or sorry, my two, and then her three. Anywho, so in the hotel, she handled it. Um, I ran down to the emergency room. Once I got there, they had me pee in a cup and I wasn't bleeding. It was very weird. So then I got um, back to one of the rooms. I was sitting there forever, forever. And all I can imagine was just, I'm bleeding and I'm just sitting here. Anyhow. So they got um, an ultrasound or a doctor and he came in with the ultrasound machine. It was on the outside um, ultrasound machine. So I was only nine weeks, eight, nine, maybe nine or 10 weeks by this time, maybe nine weeks by this time. So an external ultrasound is not going to really work, but he did it anyways. He put it on there, popped up a baby. He took it right off and I was like, okay. He's like, everything looks good. I'm like, okay, let me see. <laughs> so he does it again. Um, he's like, there's the heartbeat, takes it off. And I was like, let me see the dang baby. So he leaves it on the next time for a while. Um, and I can see just a little like flicker of a dot. And he was like, everything looks good, but we don't have enough equipment here to really know what's going on. And then of course, um, if I were to start hemorrhaging fully, what well, they wouldn't know they wouldn't have the right tools is what I'm saying. So they put me in ambulance and sent me away to the next hospital, 30 minutes away. And there they did an external and an internal and both, um, ultrasounds came back. Good. The doctor finally came in and was like, um, this could be an early miscarriage, but everything looks good. Ugh, which I know they're supposed to say that to protect themselves. Um, in case something does happen, but don't tell me I'm going to miscarry and then everything looks good. Like that in your head is just not a good situation. Fast forward, I come home. Um, I see my assigned doctor, not my doctor that I have now, but my assigned doctor, she does internal, um, looks in there and sure enough, I have a subchorionic hemorrhage. So if you do not know, I did not know much about this before I had it. I know a few of my friends that have had it. And so what it is, is it's blood clots that get caught behind the baby. This is how the doctor explained it to me. Could be different for maybe a doctor explained it differently, but this is how I'm interpreting it. Um, blood clots got stuck behind the baby and they're up. So mine was up here on the top. Um, and your body either will absorb them or release them or both. And usually by the end of the first trimester, it's all gone. So what my body was doing was releasing them. Um, and so I had the bleeding, like one big bleeding um, in Myrtle Beach. And then for three weeks, I was bleeding brown. So team I'm so sorry if you don't wanna hear that. Um, but it was brown every single day and I was so just on edge and the whole time and then I'd stop and then I'd come back and then I'd stop and then come back and it was like back and forth and the whole time I'm like what because miscarriage is very high not extremely high but it is higher um, when you do have a subcortical hemorrhage and also depends on how big it is so mine the doctor didn't say much of how big it was she said my next ultrasound that that's when they would measure it so when I saw it, it was like three little balls up at the top corner and the baby is here and up at the top corner. Um, 
that didn't look too big, probably about that big, but it's on an ultrasound machine, so you don't even know, um, like, what size it is, because it's on a machine. So, um, she didn't seem too concerned. She said that I had made it this far. I was um, 11 weeks by the time I got back and into the doctor, um, and she said, you've made it this far. Things are, look, you're on the better side of what bad things could happen. Um, take it easy. And my next ultrasound was a week and a half away. And that's where they, if it was still there, they would measure it. So I had bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. In that appointment, when she told me it's the subchorionic hemorrhage, I was still on and off bleeding, bleeding. Um, it eventually cleared up. So your 13 weeks is the last week of your first trimester, I believe. And mine cleared up at like 13 and a half. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's supposed to be done by the first trimester and I'm still bleeding. Well, brown, but I still content, like think it's blood, of course, because it's old blood, but blood that was caught up there, blah, -de blah, you know the thing. So I was so, so, so nervous. So when I went to my ultrasound, that's where they were supposed to measure it, if it was still there, um, she said, she didn't measure. It was just like, oh, they're still there. They don't look any bigger, any smaller, but they're still there. The next week was my big one where they were doing the genetic testing where she said they would measure them. Again, it was still there. I just had one little circle and she, they're not allowed to say anything, of course. And she said, I would say that's it, but I'm not 100% sure your doctor will let you know. And so the next day the doctor called me and was like, nope, no evidence, no um, report on it at all. So as of right now, I'm assuming the subquarionic hemorrhage is gone and my body absorbed it, um, but they cannot do anything about it. So if it was still there, they just monitor you extra, lots of blood tests, all of that. Um, but they can't physically like go in and do anything like that. So that is it. I stopped bleeding. I'm assuming it's over. I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna ask every single time I go in there for an ultrasound, if it's still there in my 20 weeks, I'm gonna ask them too because they're all over the place as well. Um, but that is my subchorionic hemorrhage. How I found out, what happened, what I did, where I am today, and I am 16 weeks today and still okay. So let me know if you have had one and your experience, everyone's experience is different depending on how big it is. Mine were just a little bit smaller, but a big scare in the beginning to me, that was a big scare. Um, but every situation can be different. But I thought I would share my story because I have not heard many stories on it. And when it first happened, you just think the worst case scenario. So. That is it for this story. Let me know below if you've had an experience like this. Hopefully you haven't, but if you have, hopefully we, you can relate and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.